Advanced Penetration Testing and Cyber Security Distro, Kali Linux has released this year's first version. Kali 2020.1 is out and in this video, we'll be having a detailed look at this exceptional distro that comes with state-of-the-art hacking and cyber forensics tools. I've been playing around with Kali 2020.1 from some time, mainly because in the last 6 months, Kali has undergone pretty innovative changes like the default non-root credentials, undercover mode, and Kali's interest in being deployed as the main primary OS for its users. Also, there has been a major revamp in the user interface. Kali looks gorgeous now. It's a hacking distro. It's supposed to look like this, right? This is Linux Dex. Let's jump right in. Talking about the user interface, Kali Linux switched its default desktop to XFC from GNOME in the last edition. Here, XFC is configured to be very straightforward. The tools are very conveniently organized and the desktop is streamlined to do what Kali does. The menu provides you all the software in an accessible way. Everything here is categorically organized based on what a particular software does. This is invaluable for people who are new to Kali Linux, which I guess is a lot of people. This is your standard XFC desktop with some essential items like minimize all windows, terminal, screen recorder, and workspace switcher anchored on the top of the screen. Considering Kali Linux user base, I'd say these are pretty conveniently placed. Next, let's talk about GNOME Desktop. Yeah, I know I said Kali switched to XFC, but GNOME Desktop is provided as an option during installation and honestly speaking, it looks beautiful. We get a completely new theme and icon pack with this version. The new icon pack looks stunning and it's still a work in progress, but I like what they did here. The developers are working on completing the icon pack. For a Linux distro, which you will mostly use through a terminal, Kali looks too good. Theming is done right here. The shell, the applications, and icons. Everything is aesthetically pleasing here. Looks wise, Kali wins me over. Don't hate me yet, because this is not Windows 10. This is in fact Kali undercover mode. Check it out. With just a click of a button, your whole desktop turns into Windows 10. Apparently, this is for security professionals who want to blend in public. I get the logic behind it. Personally, I have experienced curious people peeping into my Ubuntu desktop because it's unlike anything they have ever seen. This will protect you from attention in case you don't want it. Now when you are using Kali to do what not you want to do in public places, undercover mode can be quite useful. This undercover mode is fully functional too. You can use your computer normally in undercover mode. It does not hinder or cripple any of the functionalities of Kali Linux. I like this little feature, it's quite amusing, but personally, I flaunt my Linux desktop. Kali 2020.1 is the first step in a new direction. First of all, Kali is defaulting to a non-root user account. Throughout history, Kali always ran with elevated privileges, root account and 2 password. This was because many specialized tools on Kali require elevated privileges to work. But starting with this version, this is changing. Now we get a non-root, normal user account named Kali. The password is Kali2. This is done for many reasons like some apps like Chrome not working in root mode. Most Kali tools adapted to run without root. And another major reason being many people use Kali as their primary OS, even when they are not using Kali for what it's meant to do. So Kali team has decided to default to non-root account. Next up, there have been some changes in the way Kali is downloaded. Now we get three options. 1. Installer ISO to install Kali on your hard disk. This file doesn't allow you to test drive Kali in a live session, it's straight up installation only. Next, we have a live ISO, which can be used to boot into a live session, but you cannot install Kali using this file. Then we get a net installer file. Next up, let's quickly take a look at the performance, stability and software availability on Kali. Kali Linux as an operating system is both very stable and fast. It uses a modified kernel which improves performance significantly because most of the time, Kali is booted directly from a USB stick. The RAM management is excellent and the operating system feels very responsive. Kali is based on Debian and it is used by professionals in high-stakes situations. So Kali is very stable and dependable. It works fine with most hardware. Kali also has extended compatibility with Android phones in the form of Kali NetHunter. Kali Linux uses Debian stable repositories for software, so you get access to more than 60,000 tested stable packages. Pretty much anything and everything you might need can be installed on Kali in a very simple and secure way. 
With that done, let's move to the question, should you use Kali Linux? To answer that, we need to have a quick look at what exactly Kali Linux is. Kali is a Debian based Linux distro created for penetration testing, ethical hacking, cyber forensics and other Mr. Robot stuff. It is created and maintained by the cyber security company Offensive Security. First of all, Kali is not created for normal home usage. It's not created to watch movies on, browse the internet and play games. It can do these things just as well as any other Linux distro out there, but it is not targeted for home users. Other distros like Zorin OS and Linux Mint are refined extensively for these tasks. All the vehicles move you from one point to another, but they are not all created for the same singular purpose. You don't take an F1 car to the office. Even billionaires don't do that because although very fast, an F1 car is not optimized for city traffic. On the other hand, a scooter like this is highly efficient way of traveling in city traffic. I hope you get the idea. Now you saw Mr. Robot or some other hacking show and are curious about learning that kind of stuff. Kali Linux is for you. I'm not gonna discourage you, but there is no big red button labeled hack in Kali which is going to hack any Facebook, Instagram or WhatsApp account you want. Kali does have pretty powerful tools for hacking, but they are useless without a person who knows how to use them. These tools require that you have a good knowledge of Linux commands, how computers and networks work, even to start learning how to use these tools. But I want to tell you something. If you are genuinely interested in learning this stuff and are ready to put in the effort, go for it. It's going to be fun. But I'd like to mention that hacking and cracking are illegal and carry heavy punishments in all countries. You should also consider the work payout ratio. Is the work and time that you're putting into worth whatever you wish to get out of it. I'm neither knowledgeable nor interested in that field, so I cannot provide you more info than that. If you do want to use and explore Kali, you don't necessarily have to put on a dark hat. It's not all illegal stuff. It can be a fun and enlightening experience. Before we finish off, let's talk about the cons. It took me around 5 tries to install Kali and boot into it. During installation, the online mirrors were too slow, serving me data in few kilobytes per second. The estimated time was set for 2 days. The same issue persisted repeatedly. It might be because the servers are being overloaded because Kali 2020.1 is quite popular right now. Anyway, I tried installing offline without using the online mirrors and although the installation went perfectly fine, I could not boot into the graphical interface for some reason. I tried 2-3 times and it started working. Wrapping up, Kali 2020.1 is a gorgeous looking update to the Powerpack distro. Kali takes a step in a new direction with this version and in my opinion, it opens up Kali Linux to a wider user base. Do check it out, the download link is in the description below. If you like this video, do consider subscribing to my channel. Also connect with me on Instagram. Next up, check out my list of 15 Linux apps you must have. This is Linux Techs signing out.